Hi everyone, in this video I will cover how I take bird photos with my OM1 on my recent visit to Warnham Local Nature Reserve. Morning everyone, I'm here at Hey <laughs> I'm here at Warnham Nature Reserve with Nick Clay. I'll put his details up in a bit for his channel. I've been here before in winter and spring in 2020 when I got some good bird photos and breeding common frogs in the pond. But this visit was in summer, much later in the year than I've been before, and I had new camera gear. Let's quickly run through my bird setup and the settings I use. The photos in 2020 were taken with the Olympus EM1 Mark II, but I now use the OM1 with the Olympus 300mm and the 2x teleconverter at most times. As for settings, my typical setup is I shoot aperture priority as the light varies too much with shade and cloud coming over to use manual. ISO at 800 because the wireless aperture of this setup is f8, which is what I leave it at most of the time. The drive mode or shutter mode is SH2, which is 50 frames a second on electronic shutter. This gives me lots of shots to choose from, but the slowest shutter speed it can shoot at is 1 640th of a second. So it only works in good light, but I'll explain more about that later on. In terms of autofocus, I use bird subject detection or bird AI AF mode as it's sometimes called. This is a very useful feature as it recognizes the shape of the bird uh, locks onto it with a white rectangle around it and then it recognizes a head and focuses on the eye or at least quite near to it so that's very useful this setup works really well in good light for birds sat on twigs and moving and although it's quite hard to track at 1200 mil equivalent which is what i get with this setup it does work for birds in flight as well although it's not quite as good autofocus wise with the f8 aperture as without the teleconverter back to warnham and the first stop was the discovery hub and straight away I had my best ever views of a great white egret sat among the purple loosestrife. So after a bit of video, it was time to try out some bird photography. And I got this nice shot of one sat among the purple loosestrife. It locked nicely onto the head as you can see here. There were also a couple of common terns flying around and sitting on the posts. And when this one flew past, the bird AI autofocus locked on quite nicely. Although the light wasn't perfect as the sun was behind and it was a bit cloudy at this point. Next stop was at the pond. No birds and no common frogs like last time I was here, but there were a few marsh frogs. While we were there, someone told us that there was a third platform we hadn't seen on this pond. So we went up to there and the marsh frogs just sat on lily pads, which was really nice. I did try the bird AI on the frogs, but it didn't always focus on the eye, although it did lock on to the frog itself. Uh, so I turned it off and just stuck to normal single point autofocus selected and focused on the eyes. We then headed over to the woodpecker hide, where small birds were coming into the feeders. Nick was hoping for his first ever bullfinches here, a bird he hadn't seen in 10 years of trying. This nuthatch was coming into the feeder. I managed a couple of shots of it above the feeders. And this juvenile magpie was sitting there too. The shutter speed required at even ISO 800 was too slow for SH2. So I switched to silent continuous, which gives 10 frames a second, which is more than enough to play with. The bird activity wasn't that high, but at one point a couple of young pheasants appeared, and one started to peck around before it started taking a dust bath. They do this to help maintain their feathers, and keep them and the skin underneath clean. and it may also help remove parasites. A fascinating bit of behaviour to watch, so I filmed it in slow motion, as you can see here. Nick's bullfinches didn't show, but a bogey species of mine, the stock dove div, I've seen them many times, but never managed a good photo. I got some of my best yet, but better was to come later in the day. We moved on to the heron hide, which is well named as there was a young grey heron posing right in front of it on the platform. Here it tried to catch something and then stopped and had a preen. The great white egret flew in, and I had even better views than I had earlier, and got some nice close-ups. 
before the egret started to hunt. I filmed it. This is filmed in 4K, 120 frames per second. And I got a sequence of photos of it too. I also filmed in 240 frames per second. and took some more shots. The egret then took off. So I decided to head back to the centre for some lunch with a quick stop at the frogs again, of course. I spotted some bullfinches in the bullfinch hide. So I let Nick know, and he headed to that hide while I had some lunch. When I came back, he was still there, and he had got his bullfinches, as you can see in his video, which is in the link below in the comments. Check that out after you finish watching this one, of course. But a stock dove, my bogey species, was sat on a branch. It was a bit dark for the two times teleconverter, and the bird was a bit too close, so I shot with just the 300mm f4. Then I tried some shots with the 1.4 teleconverter and got my best ever shots of this species. After a few more frog photos, including this one of one being fed on by a mosquito, we went into Ashton Hyde. We were reliably informed by a regular that the kingfisher would not land on the perch here, so we weren't ready when of course it did a few minutes later. That's wildlife for you. The reason I missed it is because I was busy looking at the great white egret on the other side of the lake. It seemed alert and I soon saw why. The gulls were mobbing it. They were continually dive bombing the poor bird, sometimes getting really rather close with their swoops towards it. The bright sun coming from one side, especially on a white bird, wasn't great for photography, but I got one okay shot. We went back to the heron hide for one more look, and the great white egret came back in. After a couple of portrait shots, I tried to get some more shots of it catching and eating fish. It kept catching fish behind the kingfisher perch, of course, from where I was sat, but I got a few shots. At one point, the egret flew back in, right in front of the hide, and I got some in-flight close-up shots at 1200mm. I was quite pleased with these. I got a couple of shots of the coot family. And the kingfisher flew past a few times over the day, but never landed where we could photograph it, until, suddenly, on the perch landed a wood pigeon. At least the light and the background were nice. I then got this nice shot of a grey heron in flight, showing that this setup can work with birds in flight. But after that, it was time to go. A great day out at a great reserve, with my best ever images of two bird species, and a big thanks to Nick for driving there. And let me know in the comments if you'd like a more in-depth video on bird photography, or even one photographing marsh frogs. And do subscribe if you like wildlife photography or filmmaking. Do go check out Nick's video and channel, the link is below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.